Hi, I'd like to uh, ask you to do something for me, if you wouldn't mind. If you like this episode, I'd like you to not only subscribe on your favorite site, but I'd also like you to give a rating. Ideally, a, a five-star rating would be you know, greatly appreciated. But I think more importantly also would be just uh, some uh, comments. That helps with the algorithm and it helps build the, uh, the audience with this. And more than anything else, if you could invite somebody else to listen, just share this episode with a friend, with a colleague, and uh, I'd like to see how we can grow the soul of business. I think it makes a difference. Thanks. Today's episode is a recording that I did uh, with Ash Gandahari uh, a number of years ago when we uh, hosted a global mindset forum. It was a major summit. We had a number of speakers join us. And I'm pulling this out of the, uh, the archives today because I love the messaging that is contained in this particular episode. So, like I said, this is not a new recording. This is an archival uh, revisit. Um, and I think you're going to enjoy both the guests, but also the conversation as both Ash and I uh, take some time to explore just what it means to have a mindset that uh, can create magic in your life. Phil Goldfein. Um, I first met Phil, oh goodness, I think uh, five years ago now, something like that. Uh, you know, he is literally today the most prolific producer working in Hollywood, most you know, in, in the entertainment business. He's one of 27 uh, winners of the EGOT, you know, an Emmy, a Golden Globe, an Oscar, a Tony. Um, but more than that, I mean, I really do mean more than what he's actually won what he's actually doing with his life is what I really am excited about him you know, you know, sharing with us. Uh, yeah, he's got the hardware and the hardware is just a symbol of something that is actually a consequence of the work he's done to uh, position himself for success. And not only himself, I, I was on uh, one of his sets not too long ago, a movie that uh, is just, you know, just coming out called The Ravine. And uh, yeah, the way that I define leadership is you know, the co-creation of coordinated movement. Watching that set operate. I mean, movie sets are complex. And this, was, you know, this wasn't a huge you know, production, but it was large enough that there were uh, a serious number of moving parts. And I was just gobsmacked, truly, literally flabbergasted at how well oiled everything was. And it's a function of the consciousness. It's a function of the come from. It's a function, I think, of where Phil has actually gotten himself. And it shows up not only in the work that he does, but it shows up in the way that he lives his life. And as we look at what we're doing today with you know, the pandemic and you know, the economic disruption, I mean, all the, all the stuff that's in place here, uh, his contribution to this conversation is going to be something that I think people can really resonate with. There will be a lot that can be taken away uh, from this. So um, I think with that preamble, we'll just bring, uh, bring Phil on. Excellent. Philip. Uh, Philip, join the conversation. There he is. <laughs> Welcome, Philip. Did I, did I say anything that was out of sorts there? I'm still trying to figure this out, even after all this, this time being on, these, on, on the Zoom calls. And, and right now we're doing virtual can so it's exactly the same thing everything's working so yeah. i gotta figure out how to unmute myself sometimes <laughs> yeah. oh, you, you you have successfully accomplished that phil welcome to the global yeah. mindset forum it's, we're really excited to have you oh, thanks, man. yeah now yeah I'm, I mean, I'm one of your biggest fans i mean I, I just love the work you do i love the way that you work i love the way as a student i mean just watching you as a student uh primarily of you know, one of our joint you know, mentors and friends, Bob Proctor. Yeah, I remember, yeah, I think the very first time I, I saw you actually was standing on a chair in one of Bob's programs, giving an Academy Award acceptance speech yeah. before you actually had won the, you know, the Oscar. Yeah. And, and Bob had asked you to do that as part of a whole mindset structural thing that he was you know, working with you on. And you've been working with, you know, with Bob for what, 20 years now? Yeah, something like that. yeah, yeah, 20 years, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I mean I I just I I, I stood back yeah uh, in that in that audience and went wow this is kind of cool yeah and then yeah I think two two nights later three nights later you actually walked off with the yeah you know, with the statue yeah it's so funny you know it was such a great life lesson in terms of um, uh, being uh, creating awareness so what he was doing is uh, you're absolutely right it 
was it was five years ago now and he had me six years ago and he had me sitting standing on the chair and then he had me give the acceptance speech and what i learned is just you just need to know what you want you you have to feel it and and once you get the feeling it has to, it it just has to be attracted to you and it was such a great life lesson and so he 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 instilled in me that here's how you get anything you want because again he didn't know how to get an academy award but he knew so he he i i remember when i met him he had said what is it you want and i told him and he said okay well we can he said i can show you how to get it and he did and it was just by by feeling i mean you know the book feeling is the secret it's just by by feeling and then basically staying in that vibration the entire time and from the time that he had me standing on that chair to actually getting the academy award was was exactly six weeks and every day i would just basically relive it and basically just keep thinking about it and keep writing it down and just just it's it's all i really wanted and then boom uh six weeks went by like that and all of a sudden we're walking down the red carpet we are sitting in our seats we hear the name and off we go and now we have it was right there <laughs> <laughs> it's got good company back there there's a couple of other things there too Finally moved couple back. floating heads back there i see yeah <laughs> uh so phil you know as um blaine and i were talking and bringing you on you know I, and we we talked about like phil you know you really are a, a, you you know unique in your industry you stand out you stand out i mean there are people that are achieving to get to the top of their game in, a, in an industry by looking at other people and what they're doing. And then there are people that are just at the top of the game. I mean, I think of like people like Michael Jordan and, and Kobe Bryant, and, and you are a Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant in your industry. It really are, that's who you are in your industry. And let me share why I'm saying that. I mean, 30, you do 37 movies roughly a year is, is what I'm hearing like this year. Uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're quickly approaching 40 this year. So. Incredible. And, and what is a producer, just for our audience to kind of gauge this, what does a producer produce in a year, like typically, you know, another producer in your industry? Typically, it's about one every three years. One every three years. Yeah. Th that is incredible. And, and not to mention, you are one of 27 in history to have won the EGOT Award. So that, you know, the awards, I mean, that's, that's pretty incredible as well. So what would you say you know, people are going through disruption right now. And I believe the same mindset that you are in disruption is the same mindset you are out of disruption. <laughs> uh, what's the, what's the distinction that has got you to this stage in, in, in your so, career and in life? Well, if we just talk about this a little bit, let's face it. Yes, I know there's a, there's a virus, there's a pandemic and we have, we've got the riots and all that, but I went to a, uh, a program and it's got to be close to over 10 years ago. And it was with Peggy McCall, Bob Proctor, Mary Morrissey, and I, I think Gay Hendricks. And it was really interesting. And Blaine, I'm sure that I saw you there as well. But at the time, Mary Morrissey, and I'll never forget this, she put up a bunch of headlines. And they were like, everything that was happening back then, and it was like, there was like global disruption. And there was the, the, the Republicans fighting with the Democrats and, and the budget was going, going out of control. And she pulled it back. So this is about 2004, maybe, or 2003. She pulled it back and she said, these are the headlines from 1971. Wow. And they were the same headlines from back then. And now, yes, I know that we have the pandemic. It's the same headlines from before. And yes, we had the riots, just like Rodney King riots. And, and I'm not saying there's, there's uh, I'm, not, I'm not downplaying it because because it's obviously very important and everything's very important and yes there's a virus but is it affecting you i don't think so I, I i think right now it's like you have to still decide what it is you want and then you have to stay in the vibration of what you want because that's how you'll help the world whatever it is that your highest achiever i i truly believe this i once heard michael beckwith say that whatever it is that you want whatever it is that you love that 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 it's God's intention. And so I'm thinking, okay, well, if it's God's intention to, to basically instill in me what it is I would love right now, what it is I would want right now, then I wanna do that and I wanna honor him. And so basically the way that I'm doing that is that I think about what it is that I want and hopefully it's helping the world. Now, again, I mean, none of us, you know, I mean, this virus is, 
it is new. It's something that perhaps we haven't seen before. But then I remember SARS. And before that, I remember Ebola. Um, yes, okay, it's a different situation. But at the same time, this too shall pass. And what I've learned from most of my mentors who are m much older, they always say, this too shall pass. And I know for a fact, this too shall pass. So I want to focus on what it is I want that's, that's going to keep me in that high vibration that's going to help people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I love that notion of, uh, and, and I've worked with Mary. You know, Mary is a, a dear, dear friend. I've uh, known her forever. You know, what do you love? Yeah, that, that key word, what do you love? And it, and it is, it's linked back to the spirit that informs, the spirit that moves to and through me. Yeah, God's voice, however you want to yeah, code that or talk about that. But it, it, it is the, the linguistic of what would you love? There's a resonance to that, that I can't ignore. And, and that resonance is, you know, that's where the feeling comes in and everything else. And if I'm paying attention to that and just move from that perspective. Now, you're doing 30, you know, on, on track for 40 movies this year. And, and, I, and I wanted to really highlight the EGAP because these are not schlock productions. <laughs> there is quality. Hey, there's quality involved with this. And in the midst of all of this stuff, you know, doing what I love, and I, and I know you well enough to know that this is absolutely something that you love. This is a medium that you absolutely revel in. How do you keep the production going in the midst of all of this? Because you've got, you, you've got to have people working with you, for you, and, uh, and uh, yep. collaborating. So yep. what's, what's the secret sauce there for you? It's a great question. So, so right now, obviously, with with COVID, um, SAG and and a lot of the unions are putting out a lot of different regulations. So, all it simply means is this. So, so we're we're going to start four movies soon. So, all it certainly just just means is that we just have to follow those regulations. So, it means adding some extra people. It means taking people's temperature. It means taking tests from from people and you just essentially handle it. Um, we, we finished a movie recently in a state that was not quarantined, but the production still had to get the permission from the governor's office to, to shoot and they did, they handled it. They basically, everybody had masks on, everybody was social distancing except for the actors. The actors would just go to the set and they would, they would do their scenes when they had to. Everybody was tested every single day to make sure that nobody had a temperature and obviously nobody had the virus and it was all fine. Um, and so w we just do the same thing. You basically run into an obstacle. You basically just solve the obstacle. There's always a solution, always one, as yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, every obstacle contains the answer. Yeah, it does, yeah, there's, right. yeah, it's, it's interesting in that regard. Um, you know, the idea of, movie making yeah is you know it's storytelling <clears throat> and that's what life is life is a story that's you know kind of a you know in a continual state of unfoldment i yeah you have you know you're 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 at the top of your game right now that hasn't always been the case um and just in terms of the you know, kind of the origin story again and this is something we're asking a number of our, our uh, panelists here yeah how did you get over the hump because yeah, there's there's a mindset that allows for people to kind of personally say, okay, enough's enough, I'm going, and yeah. and also to do that with their organization, enough's enough, I'm going. Yeah. You know yeah. what what mindset just kind of catalyzed for you that yeah you, know, you can actually go back to? It's kind of your your anchor point. Sure. Sure. So, so I always wanted to make a lot of money. I, I just did. I, I have no idea why. I think that it was just maybe maybe at the time thinking security, uh, whatever it was. And so, so I was probably, uh, I, it's probably about 20 years ago when I met Bob and I was just thinking, I'm not making enough money. Now, you know how the universe has a funny way of giving us what to need. I'm sorry if there's noise. So I, I'm, I'm actually at the studio for the first day. They've allowed 5% of the, the workforce back in, but we have to keep the windows open. <laughs> it's perfect. But there's no tram today. <laughs> but there is, <laughs> But there are workers there because they're they're making some new rides anyway. Um, so so I knew that I just wanted to make more money, and the the only way that I thought that I could could do that is is maybe just work harder, get a job. So as I was starting to say, you know how the universe gives you gives you signs. I got Bob Proctor's book, You Were Born Rich, and I swear to God, Blaine, that I I and Ash, I swear to God, I was walking in a in an airport, 
And I just saw it and thinking, wow, you were born rich. That's a great book. Now, I might have got it from Nightingale Conan, but I'm not sure. And so I just started reading it. And then I had no idea who Bob Proctor was, never heard of Bob Proctor. And um, I started reading it and it really resonated with me. And I'm thinking, yeah, it's like, you know, and you don't have to work so hard. Um, and if you just do what you love, money's gonna start flowing to you. I remember having read Think and Grow Rich when I was about 20, but I had no idea. I mean, I was just thinking, okay, this went right over my head. And so, so you know, seven years later, eight years later, I see this book and I basically um, uh, read it and I mean, I devoured it in a weekend and I was working for a guy. Actually, it was Mary Morrissey's ex-husband and I was working for him as a consultant on a movie and he goes, okay, I got to leave early tonight because I got to go see Bob Proctor. I go, wait a minute. Why do I know that name? Bob Proctor. Hold on. Bob Proctor, the guy that wrote this book? And I pull out the book and he goes, yeah, yeah, I know him. I'm putting together a bunch of authors. And I go, you know this guy? And he goes, yeah, I know this guy. <laughs> I go, do you know this guy? And he, he calls him up and Bob gets on the phone and he is so nice. And he said, look, you know, if you want to meet with me, I'm in Vegas. And so I immediately flew to Vegas the next day, had lunch with him. For like, it had to be four hours and basically I, I never looked back. And w what I did learn during that time, it took me years to actually get the Oscar. But, um, uh, but what I learned is that you just have to focus on what it is you want. And that's really hard for people when you're first getting started because we have so much negativity. I mean, right, listen, right now you turn on the news, there, I, I don't think there's one positive story out there. If there is, I mean, if it's not about, if it's not about the Karens, it's about, you know, something with COVID. If you're living in California, we're, we're still not open. So I'm a swimmer, I mean, as Blaine knows, and the pools still aren't open. Um, so, so there's, there's, there's something. So you have to develop, you, you must develop the mindset where, where you only focus on what you want because that is God's intention for you. And just like Blaine was saying, uh, what, what Mary said and what Peggy said is that what would you love? And if you can just focus on what you love, then, then everything's gonna work out perfectly because it always does, always. It always so I'm does. not sure if I answered your question or if I rambled, but no, I, 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 there were two pieces there that I think are takeaways. You know, one is you took action. I mean, yeah, and 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 that is consistent with my experience of you. I mean, when I when I mentioned at the uh, introduction that you are you know just an incredible student, that has been one thing that I have really noticed about how you work is you you know not, not number one you're curious, but number two you are a student. You know, you will take stuff in and you will digest it. You'll chew on it. You'll pull it apart. You'll work with it and and you i mean and the other thing here is that focus and what i came across a statistic a number of years ago the average human the average adult has an attention span that is shorter than the average goldfish yeah goldfish's oh. attention span i mean i mean <laughs> i don't know how they measured that but, but most of us do not have that muscle you know that, and that especially muscle. especially in those of us in the united states by the way I, I will say that i mean at least other parts of the world can watch a great uh, soccer game but in, in, in the united states i think we we actually have a shorter attention span than most most parts of the, the world uh, you uh, must develop it you're absolutely right oh, yeah. you must develop it it is a muscle that needs developing Absolutely. And, and, you know, the, the one thing that I always, I always take away from Bob Proctor is that you must use imagination and the will at all times. So, so the example I, I love is that it took 14 years to actually get the Oscar. It took almost less than a year to get the Tony. So, so it, it's from, it's from the imagination and the focus. And then of course, taking massive action, but I'm sure everybody on, uh, on this Zoom call, is a massive action taker. So, so you've got to take the massive action, otherwise nothing will happen. I mean, it's basically, yeah. you've, got, you've got to do that. But again, take massive action towards what you love. Yeah, so, uh, directionally. Yeah, so I have a question for you because since I think we share the love of swimming. I mean, I, I do Ironmans and do a lot of long distance swimming myself. And I'm just, I, unplanned question because you mentioned swimming. How does that has? Do you believe swimming is supporting you in 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 all that you're creating? Well, it's really funny. You know, I I I'll have been swimming um, in in pool swimming now for it'll be on July first seven years. Like, like I I've not been in a pool in probably twenty years um, prior to that. But boy, it just you know for that 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 ninety minutes that I'm swimming, 
and working out, it's just, it's so relaxing and so fun. I have such a fun time that, yeah, I think it really helps my focus every day. I really do. Um, I've always been a focus guy, but it really, really, really pinpoints the fo laser focuses you. So I, I swear by swimming. Yeah. So, in fact, I, I keep this poster in my office. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love it. A few years ago uh, when I was doing a, uh, a race. And I was a photographer under the pool. And so I just keep that in my office to remind me it was all about persistence. Mm. Yeah. And, and for those of you that don't know, and many of you probably don't, yeah, Phil is a world-class uh, master's uh, age group swimmer. Uh, as a matter of fact, you're on track, I think. One of your goals there is a, is a uh, gold medal in the master's. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Actually, not even in the Masters, but yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> awesome. I, I, I stand corrected. <laughs> I, I don't believe in putting any limitations on, on anything. Anything that you can think of humanly is totally possible and doable. Yeah. Yeah. You know, from a practical standpoint, you know, knowing your focus is one of your powers uh, and, and you can think it, you, you know, I think there's a lot of people who say you can think it, you can create it, you know, going back to even Walt Disney, you, you can dream it, you can do it, you know really going back to that quote. My question for you is, you, know, you saying taking massive action is so critical. Do you have a, uh, a, a workflow, a process in which you go from uh, idealization to action? Wow. Uh, not that I'm aware of. <laughs> <laughs> great. That's a great honest answer. Because I, I, I think a lot of people struggle with that. I think a lot of people struggle with going from this so, so I, I always take Bob Proctor's, uh, you know, I mean, I'm always looking for, for seminars. Actually, I've taken one from Blaine as well, but The Art of Goal Creation, I took that one. And so he gave us this book. So I use this as my, my morning ritual in that I write down, you know, our, our, our goals. And then I basically write down all of my action taking for today to get me towards the goal. So I'm not sure if that kind of answers your, your question, but like I'm looking at it all the time, all throughout the day. Well, as a morning, as a ritual, that I mean, that is one way that you keep the attention focused. That's how I do it. Yeah, yeah, very powerful. Yeah, yeah. And, and are the actions like do you do you break them down? Is there a systematic process in which you go to like what gets to happen today, and you hone in on completing that? Like, and I'm getting to this practical tip conversation here because yeah. I think one of the things disruption does it causes confusion. It like takes you completely out of focus. You know, like when COVID-19 hit, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people scrambling, like, where do I go with my day? And that's why I think, the, you know, there's so much mental, like people with mental illness, it, it, there's a rise in mental illness and alcoholism, like Nick was mentioning earlier. And so I'm just curious for you, like, how, how do you go to, to, you know, how do you go to this like practical step forward? And, you know, in swimming for me, it's like, it starts with the first lap for me, because if I can't make it through the first lap, I, there's no way I'm going 2.4 miles. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, every time I get in the pool, I think there's a resistance. And then once I'm in the pool, I think I can go the, the, the 2.4 miles. And it's, I, it's funny because most people think that's easy for me. And that's the hardest one, the first lap. Okay. <laughs> that's hilarious. <clears throat> uh, so, so how I do it is, is I'll write down all the action steps I want to take today. So I try to keep it to, to four if I can, Ash, just, just simply because that's such a doable number. And so I'll write down the first thing. So for example, today, I'm actually selling four films. Now I'm going to make my sales calls first thing in the morning. And again, because can is going on first thing in the morning is 6am for us right now, uh, which is, I want to say 3pm in, 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 in can. So, so I'm making, I'm, I'm making all, all the sales calls. I've pretty much done all the sales calls I can probably by 730. Now I'm going to move on to number two, and then I move on to number three, and then number four. And then if I haven't accomplished something, so for tomorrow, for example, I'll continue to make more sales calls because every day my intent is to sell at least one product. So one movie, one television show, whatever it is, which people say, are you out of your mind? You can't do that. You can do whatever it is you say that you can do. It's whatever you say. So if you say you can't do it, you can't do it. If you say you can do it, you can do it. I, I firmly believe that. And the one thing I learned from Bob from selling as well is that if I didn't make the sale, it's just because I wasn't good enough. So how do I get good enough? What do I have to do next? And so I just, I just make some changes and I'll basically just go out and I'll resell again. 
And, and, you know, the one thing I have, I actually teach a course on, for the first time in my life, I'm actually teaching a course on movie making and TV making. And, and one of the things that I've, I've learned from actually teaching it is that you have to have massive persistence. So it's not just taking action, but you have to be persistent. It's like, who gives a blank, can I swear on this or not really? Go for it. Yeah. Who gives a fuck if somebody passes, you move on to the next thing until they say yes. All you're looking for is a yes. Who cares if they say no? It's like, next, you know, I mean, it's just nothing. Now, again, a certain part of that comes from experience, but it doesn't have to. I mean, I know a 21-year-old guy who's out there who's selling his movies. He could care less. He's only looking for that one yes. He doesn't care about a no. Yeah. Yeah, what's interesting about that is most people are practiced, and they learn it very early on. They're practiced in saying no. And, and I mean, if, if you've ever had a two-year-old, no, no, no. And it just gets inculcated. <clears throat> so so right, Blaine, that is, that is perfect. You're absolutely right. We are trained for that. I am really teaching my kids. It's like, how can you get it? How can it be done? What yeah. can you do to do it? Yeah, there, you know, Richard Bach. Yeah, some of you may remember that name as an author. Uh, wrote Jonathan Livingston Siegel. Wrote another book that I loved called Illusions. And in one of the books, and I think it was Illusions, uh, he had this line that has lived with me ever since I read it. Argue for your limitations and they will be yours. And I just love that line. Argue for your limitations and they will be yours. Oh, and great. You know, and, and, and far more, you know, people will continue to argue. I mean, people, I, I, this never ceases to astound me. People will argue vociferously and violently about why things can't be done. Yeah. <laughs> but they will not bring that same energy to why things could be different. Oh, oh my God, Wayne, you just, you just described 98% of the film industry. <laughs> <laughs> which gives you the edge, which gives you the edge, which gives you the oh, edge. I also love to say to them, okay, so just look at yourself. You're just pointing one finger at me, but you're pointing three fingers back at yourself. So now could you argue why it can be done just as passionately as you're arguing why it can't be done? And yeah. sometimes it actually works. It does. Yeah. 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 You're absolutely right. Oh my God. That's such a good one. Yeah. You know, it's such an interesting <laughs> thing that you guys are sharing because like, you know, within our organization, we do these experiential trainings all around awareness and breakthrough. And, you know, there was a lot of conversations on how it couldn't be created virtually because it's so experiential and in person, you know, to create breakthroughs for people. Yet, you know, we press forward you know, people that have been training it for 20 some years, still facilitating it, we're like, it can be done. Let's move it forward. Let's see what we can generate from it. You know, what's interesting, the feedback was, it was much more personable, much more connected than even the in-person experience for those that were doing a comparison. Of course, I'm just looking at it, did it work? And it of course worked. So it's, and I believe that so much of the world is in this conversation, why it can't be done mm -hmm. versus, yeah, definitely. you know, how, how can we generate it? How can we, you know, powerfully generated do you do you um I, i'm just curious so you're in an environment with a lot of people that are quote-unquote naysayers you know it can't be done every day how, how do you keep yourself in a game how do you keep yourself in a yes it can be done conversation with a world of no's so so blaine's not kidding i mean i i literally spend at least one hour a day in the morning studying this material so if i'm not studying for example the science of getting rich i'm studying the power of your awareness or i'm studying you were born rich again or i'm studying but but i'll find a book and i will study it for an hour so it's usually just maybe two to three pages uh a day and i'll just study it and that keeps me focused and balanced all day long so basically if somebody's negative to me, it just basically goes in one ear or out the other, or it never even goes in. You know, it's just basically, yeah, that's that's you. Because what Blaine was just saying, because they've been taught since they were two years old to say no. And so so I'm just thinking, okay, that's your two-year-old child saying, saying, no, I don't, I don't actually verbalize this, but I'll say, how can it be done? I get why it can't can't be done. And those are great arguments, but let's come up with some great arguments of how it can be done. And I think that's one of the ways that I sell so much stuff is because I'm always thinking, how can it be done? What can we do? You know, Very powerful. It is. I mean, I love it because that's about possibility. You're, you know, the focus that you bring to this, and this has been, you know, again, my experience in, in, in just interacting with you over the years, you are very possibility oriented. You know, what's possible? What's possible? What's possible? Oh. You know, leadership is the art as well as the science of bringing possibility into reality. And one of the things that I discovered a long, long time ago is when somebody's saying no, one of the things that they're actually telling me is they don't see the possibility in their minds, you know, in a timeline that they hold in their mind. That possibility doesn't, doesn't live in time. 
And one of the things that you do with your uh, this question, yeah, well, how would it be possible? What you do is you invite people to expand their timeline. And all of a sudden it drops in on a timeline. It's kind of like, well, I can see it in, in 10 years. Well, wonderful. If you can see it in 10 years, what do we need to do today? Yep. And then it starts the conversation. Right. Right. Yeah. And you know, if, if, if very amazing. So I have a question. You know, this is, I do the how to questions and feeling questions. And so I have to ask this question because, again, and I've been saying this six years ago, I couldn't hear some of this conversation we're having because right. of where I was at that time. Hey, and, I, and I just want to make sure we serve those people too, because we're privileged. You know, we have access to Bob Proctor and all the greatest leaders in the world and thought leaders in terms of this goes. And, and here's my question for you. There are people right now saying, okay, I heard Phil say I swim 90 minutes a day and uh, I spend an hour in the morning <laughs> studying. And uh, their question is like, how do you have the time? That is two and a half hours of your day. How do you generate the time? And, you know, of course, you know, the conversation is they're thinking of it in a linear f format versus a, a quantum format. Mm -hmm. And so my question for you is, because I'm seeing you have three beautiful children, if not more, I'm seeing at least three. And so, my, yeah, there's a picture right there. Yeah, right and there. so you have a family, of course, and you have a successful career. How do you, what, what, where do you, where do you go to generate the, the time and energy to create the life you've created? You know what? It's very simple. So, so one of the things I did, I mean, obviously I've been in this business for a while. And so, so one of the things that I was, I uh, was taught by Madonna is that she was highly scheduled because I, I, I did a project with her years and years ago. And I learned that she was highly scheduled. Every single minute was scheduled. Now I don't want to have every minute scheduled, but what I do do is that I do wake up at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, and I've been doing this now for many, many years. Um, and so I, and I go to bed early, I go to bed by eight 30 and I'll, I'll wake up at four. And then basically I get out of bed and I start and I start my study. And then by five, five 30, I get into the pool. So I'm home with the kids by seven, seven 15, see them off to school when there is school right now, it's actually at home. And so, so, uh, and, and then from, from 9 AM until about 5 PM, I'll work you know, if I want to, uh, which, which usually I do because I love my work. So, you know, my work is a part of me, just as I'm sure your guys is, is a part of you. I can see it in your, your speech. And so, so then we'll, we'll have dinner and then I'll go to bed and that's my day. So you, you make the time. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Beautiful. Go ahead, Blaine. I was just going to say, yeah, time, time is, you know, I, I think one of the most poorly understood mediums that we live in and everybody lives in time. But yeah, I'm, and I'm not going to go down a rabbit hole on this. But yeah, <laughs> but being yeah, that being said, I'm not talking about it. <laughs> really, yeah. There's a dimensional quality to time. That, yeah, and most people experience as, you know, experience it as a linear quality. And so the point that you're, I mean, if I get a routine, <clears throat> this thing about you know, doing what I love, time seems to slow down for me. Yeah, when yeah, there. Yeah, uh, Milton, uh, Milton Erickson, a uh, hypnotherapist, you know, who was modeled in NLP, yeah, had a very interesting uh, term that he used in, with his patients. Take as much time as you need in the next 15 minutes to tell me everything about your life. Now, take as much time as you need in the next 15 minutes. It just kind of, the brain goes, what? But then it <laughs> settles. Take as much time as you need as permission, and then you've got 15 minutes. Work it. <laughs> so take as much time as you need today to do everything that you need to do. And you've got 24 hours. Yeah. It, it's an interesting play on dimensionality, not linearity. Yeah. And, and yeah, I, I, I totally, listen, I think a lot of people spend the time in busy energy, which mm -hmm. is where I believe, you know, you know, Blaine, you and I were talking about this in terms of focus. And I think busy energy is that linear thought process. Yeah, it is. I have to do, I have to do, I have to do. Whereas when, when we, when we live in a different time dimension, you know, when we, when we choose to live in a time, different time dimension, it can, it, the experience of life becomes very different. And that's where focus comes into play. And that's what I love about what, what Phil is sharing is like, I plan out the day. So it's not, there's no reaction. There's just responsibility. Once, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, very powerful. So, you know, I do want to ask this of you, Phil, and, and that is, I think a lot of people, you know, I, I may have been getting up, I, 
you know, early because Iron Man training, when you did, I, I, when I, I remember, this is where I think uh, just to practical, you know, bring the practical pace into this. And that is, I remember, you know, going through business school, you know, while I was working full time and I'm like, when, when it was done, I'm like, wow, there is so much time. <laughs> what do I do with all this time? And, and I remember doing Ironmans and I had the same experience. Like you go exercise for two and a half hours and you come back to your corporate world you're so much more productive. I mean, my productivity was so high. And I'm like, what do I do with all this time? And I think that's what's great when you build up and expand in life. It just allows for you to live in a different time paradigm. But my question is this for you. Even though you do all this, I mean, I'm sure you take some vacations with family and you go off that routine of or do you keep the routine? That's my question. Let's start there. And, and, and do you ever find yourself, the follow-up question is that, do you ever find yourself in a scarcity of time and some days when things didn't get done maybe or the actions weren't complete? And how, how do you work through that? Well, I actually don't get the scarcity of time just simply because awesome. I do use my will all the time. So, so when we're going, and it's funny you should say that because we're about to go on a 10-day vacation. So what I'll do is I'll keep the morning schedule. So I'll keep the schedule in terms of the training and the studying. But that's before everybody gets up. And then I've got the whole rest of the day to just, you know, play. So, so by the time that I come back, I'll play. And then if I have to make a phone call or, or, or a sales call or whatever it is, I'll take the time to just go off and do it. But I don't obsess over it. I just do it. And then I come back to, to where I was going. Yeah. But, but I never take time off from studying because here's the one important thing that I really have noticed is that you go down just as fast as you go up if you're not studying and staying in the vibration of exactly what you want all the time. Because I read this from, I believe it was uh, a Napoleon Hill, and I'm sure Blaine, Blaine will know. But, but essentially the way that our brains are, or our minds, our brains are, are, are working is that, that we're much more apt to go negative if we're not constantly thinking about what it is we want and staying in that vibration, we will immediately go back. Somebody was once saying, I think it was Peggy McCall, says all it takes is a tiny bit of or Bob, a tiny bit of poison to kill. Yep. So it's the same thing with negative thoughts. And so therefore, and right now, again, as we were talking about earlier, we are being bombarded with negativity. And, and by the way, being part of the media, remember, the media only exists for one thing. It's not, I forget what Donald Trump says or anybody else. It exists to sell, to sell advertising, to sell toothpaste, to sell toilet paper, to sell whatever it is. There would be no media if there was no advertising. So, so what's going to attract people? People are looking at all these, these negative ads and sorry, the, the, these negative stories. And as a consequence, the ratings have just shot up huge. So can you imagine what the advertising rates are right now? They're huge. And so, Hey, but, but if that's how you want to spend your time, great. But I try to encourage people, just stay with what you want. Just think about what you would love. That's it. Nothing else. And, and that is, you know, the focus point. I mean, it really is. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping focus and keeping in motion. You uh, could really use the imagination. Yeah. The imagination, again, is a gateway to the soul. It's a gateway to the spirit. Yeah. We're wrapping this up here. So yeah, every guest that we uh, have on here, Key question, and it, you know, kind of yeah, you know, in your life experience, everything that you know that works, yeah, you know, through change, through perturbation, through just upset, what would be one actionable nugget that you would leave people with and saying, if you do this, there will be success at the end of the road? The only thing that you have to do, it's just really one thing. It's what is it you would love? What is it you want? That's it. Then you just stay in the vibration. Now, easier said than done, but is it? I mean, what's the alternative? Not doing it. So stay in the vibration of exactly what it is you want, because that's what you're going to get. You're going to manifest whatever it is that you are staying in the vibration of, of wanting. So if it's good health, that's what you're going to get. If it's, you know, if it's not, and the, the opposite of that, then that's what you're going to get. So just, just stay focused. That's it. Uh, There's nothing else. Right. Phil, thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. And as busy as you are, I really, and Ash and I both you know, mean this sincerely. Thank you for taking the time to, to sit and talk with us. And All right. Also, Blaine, I do have a question for you. Why wasn't I invited to lunch? <laughs> oh, you, know, you are always invited. If you, if you want to stick around, come on down. Come I would, on down. Yeah.